Raptors in terms of where you want this team to be, where they can be, expectations being met. Oh, man, it was a 31 nothing run. It was really good. You know, and uh, just that they're all grateful for the win. Um, just made some uncharacteristic mistakes early, just with penalties and kind of playing a little bit um, instinctual or had sloppy eyes early, but just the responses throughout the game were impressive for the guys. You know, whether it was going line or fourth down, so you know, excited for the guys and how they play. In general, how did you think the D line played, especially against what's considered a pretty good LSU front? Uh, we were impactful. You know, we we're impactful in short yardage situations. Um, when it became once we were able to kind of get in the mode of listen, these are the run sets, these are the pass sets, and they were able to tee off a little bit. They were really impactful. And uh, it's our job to give them the keys and the work. It's, and we've got really good players. You know, and I thought they really did a good job. I thought it was multiple people. You know, obviously Jared was impactful, but Pat, uh, Malcolm Ray, Dennis Briggs, Raiden Fisk, Josh Farmer. You know, there were a lot of different pieces there that made the picks. How much did it help being able to keep rep counts down for those guys and kind of keep them fresh and rotate? It's part of how we want to play. You know, and, and, and it's like that in the secondary two hit at Linda. You know, I think we were probably in the mid-60s in that game as far as plays. Some of that was our fault, you know, just giving up a, some penalty yards, giving up some free plays. Uh, but the second half was more the way you want to play, but still not super clean. We still got to be better than that. You've talked a lot about Josh being one of your most improved guys on the defense this offseason. How nice is it to see him go out and kind of validate that in game one? Yeah, I mean, he's showing it for me. I trust him. And he's one of our better players in, in the interior, and it's important to have him out there. It was good to see him get, you know, get a sack and make that play behind the line of scrimmage. But Josh, is, he's an improved player. What did the film tell you about the linebacker play on Sunday night? And who stood out to you? I think early on our eyes weren't very good, you know, and I think um, just the, the, you try to have intensity in practice. You try to replicate that. And, you know, obviously, we, we kick the ball off to start the game and just, you know, you know, a misdirection play and your eyes are in the wrong place and you go, hey, what, what I loved about our guys is, you know, it wasn't next series. It was truly next play. And I think they exemplified that. We actually had a penalty and gave them more plays down there, but our guys battled. And it's kind of what our program's about. We don't want it to happen that way. But I thought the response throughout the game was really impressive. Tackling's tough to practice in the preseason because the way you, got, you go about it. How was it in game one? How much do you expect them to step forward in game two? And um, so on? You know, they got some good good players, but our fundamentals are where we can get better. I thought we left our feet a couple too many times. Um, but the quarterback's a good ball carrier. You know, I thought we had, we had three on him in one play. You know, that, that a play get out on one of his quarterback draws. So, um, but overall, I mean, it's it's a constant improvement. You know, I think the things that we got to hang our head on are our pursuit, effort, um, and tackling and then how we attack the football. You know, I thought there were a couple times that the ball almost got out, that we were pretty aggressive around it. Um, so we just got to continue that. Two years in a row, they had to go all everything wide receiver. I knew they had to do more than just cover as a quarterback for you, but just what you guys on the front. Yeah, I mean, that was part of I read the, um, you know, that first series, that first drive, you know, we gave them, um, you know, a look, they create a one-on-one, -on -one, and it's our guy against their guy. Our guy won twice. And so that's really impressive. You know, I mean, uh, you know, some offenses always talk about trying to create one on ones. You know, sometimes we're okay having one on ones too. The, the two stands in the first half, especially the second one where you got four guys, I think, around him making the play. I guess, is that one of your best, one of your favorite things to see? Yeah, I just, I think, like we said, right, just the response current in that moment of whether it was fourth and goal or fourth and one. You know, in the shadow of our end zone. I mean, those are critical times. You know, where we talked about the history of playing great defense, and you know that comes in all shapes and sizes. But for sure, fourth down stops are takeaways. Fourth down stops are momentum builders, uh, especially when they put it in the hands of their best player, and we can make the play. And so that, those were good, great, great situations for us and good football. Talked about it a little bit, but their composure. You know, how would you how would you assess the composure that you saw from this group? Much better once we got them to calm down. I mean, we, we had some uncharacteristic sideline plays, um, some late hits, um, you know, and the flags are on the ground. It's our fault, you know, and so we just got to go on to the next play and learn from that. But, you know, if you, we gave them you know, plus 45 yards, you know, and just free yardage to move the ball. And so that makes it harder on them. And we're better than that. We're smarter than that. We train them smarter than that. Our guys usually respond better than that, and we've got to be better in those moments this week. Coach Norvell talked about Kevin, how he was a little limited in adapting to the new role in fall camp, but was able to get out there a little. I guess, what have you seen from him? And even when he can't be out there, how valuable is he? You know, 
There's a couple guys that were a little bit banged up in camp, but they built so much trust with me and our staff. You know, and Kevin's one of those guys. And as long as he tells me he feels that he can go, I'm going to play him because I trust him. I trust what he stands for. I trust his ability. I trust his playmaking. Um, I trust that he has our team in the best interest. And you know, Sunday probably wasn't his best game, um, but it was the most he's ever played safety for us. But today was probably one of his better practices he's had this year. And so that's who he is. Tatum said he and BJ have been more committed to the diet, and just a lot of things I'm sure you guys are on that about. What, what is that doing for them and for him too? I think it's easier to practice harder and longer, you know, just to be more fit. I think we're for sure seeing the DJ life. You know, Tatum, um, you know, they, they're doing a good job just in the morning routines and breakfast and things. And I know it seems common sense, but um, you know, little things do make big changes. And I think that's a big deal with DJ Lundy. I think we're really seeing that. Tatum's obviously trying to help him along. I know Kalen's tried to invest in that as well. So um, I think it's a chain effect with that group. I know it's early in the year and nobody's healthy. How, how much fun is it to see Tatum looking like, you know? Yeah, one of Tatum's better games last year was LSU. You know, and so it's our job to help drive him and push him to play at that level Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And he wants to. There's zero pushback for Tatum with him. He's a leader. He's a seminal in all sense and purpose. Um, it's just, you know, human nature kicks in sometimes. We got to help push through that with him uh, because he is a he's a very effective player and you know, he's somebody we count on. Fans love to see big hits. Do you guys like to watch those in the film room too, like what Tatum did? When I'd like to watch the legal ones. You know, and that was legal. You know, and what goes up must come down. <laughs> Tatum did a good job. What stands out about Frank Gore Jr. when you're watching Southern Miss film? Uh, He's a, he's a good player. Remember when we were at Memphis, he came over to visit us. And, um, you know, he just, they definitely get their money out of him. You know, they use him in all different ways. And uh, he's a make you miss, breaks tackles, can catch the ball. Um, the lineup at quarterback, probably 10 plays a game. Um, and just, you know, he's a really good player. Um, he's definitely somebody they feature. Sure. I mean, that first play couldn't be about, about as bad as you hope to see. But how, how do the guys respond to that? Yeah, I, I had kind of addressed that earlier. It just, I, the proudest thing was just the responses and the bad moments, whether it was penalties, uh, whether it was just you know, first play of the game, poor eyes, right? And, um, you know, if they would have handed the ball off on that play, we probably would have tackled the guys with 11 people. That was the problem, you know what I mean? And just, you know, just we got over anxious and, you know, but what I loved about it wasn't next series, it was next play. And, you know, and that happened on that drive. The play got given up. We got him a second or third down, and then they called a penalty as we were running the quarterback backwards. So we had to restart it over. And um, Duda stepped up twice, had two one-on-one plays. Um, we finished with a sack to finish that thing off. So, you know, not perfect uh, at all, but definitely great response to that first play. That was uh, not our proudest moment. You, you talked work. about legal hits. I guess there were some of the penalties in the first half. So it seems a little questionable maybe. I'm not trying to get you to talk about them. Are all penalties the, the same to you in that in that circumstance? Or are there some where you might tell a guy, I don't think what you did is that wrong? No, I mean, there's, there's you know, Bernardo Green had a PI with his hands were a little bit high and bang, bang play. That's different than hitting a guy out of bounds. You know, those are, there's focus penalties and then there's fundamental, you know, and you can coach the fundamentals. It's the ones that, you know, the, the late ball fouls, uh, the things that are more, you know, where you you don't play with great poise. You know, those are the ones that we address uh, a little bit more aggressively. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, yards are important. We don't want to give free ones. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate y'all.